Hello, this is Simon from Tokyo Productions, and welcome to another tutorial for Motion 5. This time we're going to be looking at making this music visualizer effect. And now this is something that's obviously very easy to do for users of After Effects who just need to grab the nearest tool and it's all done for them, but in motion we need to be a little bit more ingenious. So let's get started. Um, first of all I'm going to come to my file browser and I'm going to import my music track. If we go to command 9 we can see that that's now sitting in my project. Next thing we need to do is to create a bar. So I'm going to use the line tool and I'm going to hold down the shift key and drag out a vertical line. Come to the inspector uh, we'll center it up just for the fun of it and we'll come to the outline and set the width to 1 the geometry and we'll set the 0.1 y to 200 and everything else to 0 and I'm going to rename that bar Next, I'm going to make a replicator, and to do that, I'm going to hit L, and then I'm going to set the shape to line, and the number of points to 16, and then I'm going to adjust the start and end point on X. Uh, so that's going to be minus 80 and 80. I'm going to set the origin to center and then I'm going to come to the cell controls for the bar and let's open up the scale properties I'm going to set the Y scale to 0 I'm going to set the scale Y end to 50% and the scale randomness on Y I'm going to set to 5%. Um, and now if I zoom in on that you'll see I have the beginnings of my analyzer. Uh, and next we're going to add the key factor in all of this which is an audio behavior and I'm going to apply that to the scale Y value. So I'm going to right click on the uh, scale Y, add parameter behavior, audio and then up here I'm going to select my music track as the source. It'll take a few seconds just to quickly analyze it like that uh, and if I play that starting to work uh, but we need to do quite a bit more on it. Uh, just just to go through these controls here uh, the we want to use the amplitude which is the the loudness of the signal uh, rather than transients, which is the attack. We want to leave that set to all frequencies for now, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this high frequency down to 20. Again, it needs to reanalyze it. Um, what it's doing is it's now selected just this lower part of the frequency spectrum, uh, the 11 hertz to 20 hertz section. So that will now only respond to the very low frequencies down in that range. I'm going to also add to the replicator cell scale randomness Y. I'm going to right click here, add parameter behavior, randomize, and this is where the cheat factor starts to come in. I'm going to set the amount of randomize to 5 and the noisiness to one and this will enable us to believe that there's a lot more happening than there was without it. If we'd play it without it they all move together. As soon as I add the randomize they move 
independently and that looks much more plausible. Okay, now our next step is to go through uh, and make our remaining bands. I'm going to set this position to minus 880 over there. And then I need to duplicate it 12 times. C Command D to replicate it and so on. And I'll come back when I've got uh, 12 of those all neatly labeled. Okay, so we're back and I've now got my 12 replicators. They're all sitting over on the left at the moment. But what I need to do is I need to spread them out across the width. So my first replicator is at the top. This is very important. Uh, and my last number 12 is at the bottom. And so I'm going to move that last one to, instead of minus 880, I'm going to move it to plus 880. So then we're going to hold down the shift key and select replicator 1 and replicator 12. Select them all. We're going to come to... Sorry, you're not going to be able to see this because it's on the wrong window. But I'm going to come to Object Alignment Distribute Horizontal Centers. And then you'll see that that makes a whole array of them, like so. OK, next we need to set a different frequency for each of those 12 bands. So in order to do that, I'm going to type audio in the search box here, and that brings up all those audio controls. So happy with Replicator 1, just need to go through and set these frequencies. So band 2, I'm going to set to 20 to 40. Band 3, I'm going to set 40 to 80. Band 4, I'm going to set 80 to 160. And you can probably start seeing the pattern, which is that I'm doubling the gap every time. So band 5 is going to be 160 to 320 and band 7 band 6 I'm sorry is going to be 320 to 640 band 7 is going to be 640 to 1280 band 8 is going to be 1280 to 2560 band 9 is going to be 2560 to 5120. Scroll down to get to band 10. 5120 to 10 to 40. 10240. And band 11, we're going to start cheating. 10240. I'm only going to get to up to 18,000. And band 12. I'm going to go 18,000 to, um, to the max. And now if I play that, you can see I'm getting that differentiation between the different bands. I just want to point out that, that, that I was cheating at the very, very high end. I was also cheating at the very, very low end, um, mainly because there's not going to be much a uh, signal being picked up at those bends and we want to concentrate on the on the middle where we want to be a bit more precise. We need to now go through uh, and introduce the correct element of variation so they don't all look the same. So I'm into the search box I'm going to type random um, and I'm just going to go through and starting at 2 I'm going to click on the random seed for the randomizer like so, band three, literally just go th go down and click. Very quickly done. And the random seed effectively introduces a, the, the degree of randomness that we need to separate them all off because they've, they've all now got a different seed. Like so, last one to do, 12, generate. Now, now if we look at it, A lot more interesting looking randomness in there. Okay, let's just um, stylize it up a bit. 
close up the group. Uh, let's come to the library, generators, generators. Uh, I want to use the gradient. I'm going to make a new group. Drag that gradient into a new group, like so. Come to the inspector, open the gradient, set it to radial. I'm going to set the X end to 1920 and the Y end to minus 40 and the Y starts to zero. So that gives us a gradient centered in the middle. I'm going to set the colors. So this left hand color is going to be 0 0.2, 0 0.1 and 0 0.21 on blue and the right hand color is going to be black. I'm going to add one more thing which is a clouds generator. Apply that above that. Uh, open up the gradient. I'm going to set the color to black by removing that tab on the right. I'm going to click on the top and to create a new opacity tab. I'm going to set the left hand opacity to 15, the right hand opacity to 0. And I'm going to set the method to turbulent. And I'll increase the speed to 2. And if we just play that background. Just adds to a little bit more interest, I think. Um, let's move that group to the back. What I also want to do is apply a ramp behavior to its opacity. So I'm going to set the opacity to 0. Right click here, add parameter behavior, ramp. And I'm going to set the end value to 100. And the end offset I'm going to set to 650. And now that will gradually fade in. OK, we need to do a little bit of stylizing of these bands themselves. So I'm going to come to the shape, style, brush color of the outline. And I'm going to pick that off the background. And I'm going to come here to the color wheel and just increase that. So we've got something like that. And then we're going to add some filters to the to the group with the replicators in it. Library filters, color correction, levels, apply that. Come to the inspector, twirl open the controls. I'm going to right click on the white in, add parameter behavior, audio again. Select my track up here, a little bit of analyzing going on. Set the scale to 0.5 and I want to set the apply mode to subtract. So if we look at what's happening with the filter there, As it gets uh, louder, uh, it gets brighter. So that's what we're trying to do there. Come to the library and the glow section. We'll add a glow. Apply that. We'll set the radius to 20. The opacity we'll set to 0.5. Zoom in so we can see that what's happening there. For the threshold we'll set down to 0. And the softness we'll leave at where it is. OK, so finally we need to add those particles and I'm going to create a new group, Command Shift N and come to the library, Particle Limiters and I'm going to use the Magic Dust uh, particle system and drag it to that new group. Uh, and I'm going to open it up, come to the inspector, I'm going to set the birth rate to zero while we set it all up. Um, it's come in short, so I'm going to come to the end of my project highlighted the emitter itself and I'm going to hit O to extend it out. I'm going to set the shape to line and the start point I'm going to set to minus 960 and the end point I'm going to set to 960 and I'm going to set the emission range to 180. Uh, next, I'm going to twirl up in the color of a life down here uh, and I'm going to zoom in on my colors here on the canvas. The 
left hand color I'm going to pick that bright bar the right hand color I'm going to pick off the background next I'm going to add to the birth rate uh, an audio behavior again and I'm going to right click add parameter behavior audio and I'm going to select my music track a little bit of analyzing I need to set the scale to 75 and now as the music kicks in you can see that it generates more particles as the loudness increases okay so that's uh, more or less uh, everything I wanted to show you um, the other thing before we go however is uh, what if what if we wanted the analyzer to go down as well as up well that's very very easy to do let's come to the shape uh, of the bar if you remember we created that bar very early on if I set the point to y value to minus 200 you'll see that that's now got a two-sided analyzer Okay, so I hope that's been useful. Uh, as I say, it, it's involved a lot of um, trickery to get us there, but the result is reasonably convincing. I think what really one can take away from this is that uh, you can do a lot of things with the audio behavior in motion, but uh, frequency analyzing is not obviously what it's uh, ideally set up to do. So I hope this has taught you enough tricks that you can apply it to all sorts of other interesting uh, projects. Here's one that I just very quickly knocked up to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Okay, so thanks very much indeed for watching uh, and I hope to see you again next time. Thank <laughs> you.